Ticket number 24, staff member, IT manager. This is, an, uh, this is the IT manager. Please connect with Adam. He needs assistance with Windows updates. He doesn't have our corporate machine, but I want his um, a system updated and secured before he temporarily uses his personal machine to access our site. Now, there are multiple things that, that are happening. So let's first talk about it. First, what skills are we learning from this ticket? We're learning how to use remote technologies on how to access computers all around the world. Meaning, if your employee, let's say, for example, they have a corporate laptop and somehow they uh, like messed it up. It's not working or uh, it fall down on the on the ground and it's totally broken. How are they going to get to work and quickly um, get back to emails and things like that, they still have to use something that they have and that could be their personal laptop. Or even if it's their, let's say, company-given laptops and somehow it's having some issues and they want you to connect to that laptop, you still need to utilize your remote connection skills, remote connected skills, so you can get into that machine. And then, of course, after that, whatever you have learned from all of these courses, tickets, you have to solve uh, whatever the issue is or the request. You just have to do that as a normal IT person who is in front of a machine. But here we are trying to learn the remote connection skills. How do we get into Adam's machine from anywhere? So in this case, we assume that Adam is outside of our network and he's just logging in from his home and you are the one who's going to be the help desk and you're just going to get into his machine and you're the first thing you need to do is to update his system then you know after that um, you can do whatever you can give him VPN access whatever you want to do with that so the so what we have here in this lab is let's go ahead and what we have here how we are going to create this scenario Adam let's suppose is in home right now he's using this laptop let's say from home we're just going to assume that and you, uh, you're the MSP help desk. You are working with the company uh, as an IT professional and you have your own machine where you are going to use one machine to access Adam's machine. And let's assume Adam is somewhere different in the world, Australia, and you're sitting in the US. So the first thing you need to do is to tell Adam um, uh, how to connect. So of course, you're going to either call Adam or you are going to communicate with him through email to tell him what you are going to do and how your Adam is, uh, how Adam will be accessing some link. So first, let's talk about what does Windows provide us. So let's just go into your Windows 11 machine and as a uh, Windows 11 machine, what do we have here? And like I said, Adam is not using anything; it's his home machine. So we're not talking about VPN and you already have that machine and you connect it. You just learn all of these different type of skills. That's that's not going to work over here because Adam machine is not on your system at this point. We're just assuming that. So what we have in Windows is if we if we search for something like this remote, let's see what we get. So from your fundamentals knowledge, you know that remote desktop connection only works when a computer is either locally inside that business and both of both computers can access each other in a local network or you connect to a VPN and then you can connect to that machine. And you did this in the last ticket. But in this case, in our assumption, this is not going to work because Adam is sitting in Australia. He have different IP addresses. You have different thing going on and you have no connection between each other. So a remote desktop connection is out of our, uh, you know, this is not going to work. So let's see what else do we have. If I just type here, remote doesn't give us any information in the, in the current Windows. So Windows also come with this tool called Quick assist or assist, let's just type that assist. Let's see what we have here. So if I type assist here in the search box. So Windows 11, Windows 10 will come with quick assist and you can also download this application. So let's go ahead and open this application. So from your machine, you're gonna open application and you're gonna say, okay, I got quick assist right here. So I'm gonna open it and I'm gonna tell Adam through the phone or through the email. Hey Adam, can you open quick assist? I'm gonna basically log into your machine and help you out with how to uh, fix this Windows uh, updates issue, okay? So you're gonna open your machine and you're going to say, okay, I wanna help someone. So this is get help and help someone. So you see you're learning how to remotely connect to any other machines in the world if they're using Windows uh, features. 
if they're using something else i'm going to also show you a second tool in this as well so you can use something else as well so here we have help someone so i'm going to click on help someone and then it's going to ask you for a sign in option so if we click on sign in option here we got different sign in options available over here as well sign in to an organization search company or organization you're working for all that sort of stuff but here we're going to use just a normal adams uh sorry your um help this uh, account that admin account that you have so you're going to use that over here so let's go ahead and type that and you will have your own um uh, email and adam uh, sorry the office 365 instructor email we're going to have to give you that and you're going to click next here and then type the password i'm just going to click yes here So right now it says that share this code, security code, you will stay on the screen until the person you're helping, um, helping enters the code. So it says that the code expires in 9 minutes 45 seconds. So let's go back to now, where do we want to go back? We're going to go back to Adam's machine because we cannot access Adam's machine. This is our assumption right now, right? He's in Australia. So we're going to have uh, tell Adam to log into your personal machine. Just log in the way you log in. This is his personal machine. And we're going to say, oh, I'm going to connect to you. Uh, go ahead and Adam and find on your Windows 11 or Windows 10 quick assist application. So you're going to type quick assist and Adam is going to open his on his side. Quick assist just like that. And Adam is going to get help. Uh, in this scenario, you wanted to give help. Adam is going to get help because he needs that code. So what are we going to do? We're going to copy this code from here. Let's go ahead and copy it. Right click. And let's just do a clipboard. Control C. Or you can just type it if you want to. I mean, you don't have to do that. So I'm going to do get. So there you go. We got we copied that by using the features here. Clipboard. And I just copied it. So now I have that code. I'm going to go back to Adam's machine and then type it here. So I'm just going to type that code and drop it there. I click on submit there. And it says connecting right here. Waiting for the other person to accept your request. So we're going to go back to Adam's and he's going to allow you, allow you to share the screen because you're trying to connect to someone's personal machine. So there's definitely going to be security. You cannot just say connect and it's going to get connected like how corporate systems work, right? because those are already designed that way the you are the admin there the you have more rights and you can just get in and help them right now you're connected from your machine with admin uh, right here so you see right here so a user is not an administrator mode so of course this whoever you are and you're trying to connect to adam's machine you're not going to be the admin of that machine whatever you do on that Adam's machine now because that's his personal machine you do, you every step that you're going to do you're going to need rights so if this is Adam's machine and we need to ask Adam that we need uh, more uh, like a request for control then you need to ask for that because right now only Adam can show you things and tell you okay this is where so you one way is people what they do is they will tell Adam to okay Adam go ahead and open windows updates so he's going to say where i'm going to go ahead and click on start here and then what you want to do adam uh type like um right here in in the start go ahead and type windows like that and windows update will show up like that okay so one way is this you you guide a user and then they just go in there and look into windows updates and then they follow your uh step now, another scenario could be very technical and you can say, okay, Adam, can I take over your screen? There's a lot of steps that I need to do. And Adam can watch his screen while you do things. You can come here and say remote request control. So when you do request control, Adam on his side is going to get a message that this person wants to access or is looking for more requests. So FLU, FNLU is requesting. So you're going to say allow. Adam can deny and allow. This is how the remote troubleshooting or remote um basics works you you gotta be in contact with that person right because you're trying to get to a personal laptop which you don't have too many rights and you always need to do these things because for legal purpose so this is where when you do a full control then you can come here and then click start clicking on adam's machine now see now adam's can adam can watch you now while you do certain things and you can easily finish your work without 
telling Adam what to do because he may not be very computer savvy and there's going to be a lot of time wasted in that. So you take over and you do what you know. After this, you're inside the computer. This is, these are your IT skills now. These are your operating, uh, operating system uh, level skills. This is what you have learned from the courses, from the tickets, from the projects, from many learnings. This is has nothing to do with remote anymore because you are already inside an operating system at this point. So you have already achieved the skill set of getting into someone's rem uh, machines remotely when you do certain things like that. So what have you achieved so quickly from this right now? On your resume, you can put quick assist as a remote troubleshooting tool or remote access tool. That's it. Quick assist is a known product now. You can talk about quick, quick assist in the resume. Okay, so if, what if you don't have quick assist? What what type of other tools are people using? So I'm going to go ahead and um, cancel this. But you're free to come over here and then kind of like play around with different type of features over here because you are definitely going to be using some sort of remote tool um, in your work. So let's go ahead and leave this and we're going to cancel this whole application. And this will say that the sharing has been disabled or ended. So we're done with that. And then, of course, on the user side, is gone as well. Now, some companies, they may not rely on quick assist and they may do a little more professional type of software approach. And there are many, many tools out there in the market that people use log me in there. Are, but that type of tools comes with its own, uh, like, you know, uh, subscriptions and things like that, or you need an email address and all that kind of stuff. And the one tool that I'm going to show you that is kind of like you could really use it for remote troubleshooting and remote helping anybody family members or anyone that would you would like to learn more skills it's called zoho zoho assist i'm gonna go ahead to go to google and let's go to google and find zoho assist so inside your google type zoho assist just like that and then click on assist zoho assist and we are going to open free remote support software so basically it has a lot of good features and you can use it for that type of uh, so go ahead and create a new account or use your gmail account whichever account you want to use and that will be your account so keep keep a note of it because you can use it outside of these labs this is just like i'm showing you inside the lab but you really don't need it inside the lab you can create your account and then do other things so go ahead and log in with the Gmail or you create your own account and just sign into this system. So here I logged in with our uh, account right here. So I'm going to click not now. And here is when you get to this, um, uh, the dashboard. And like I said, you can use it from your browser as well. You see the same process. Every other remote type of troubleshooting software that people use for like, you know, accessing any machine out there in the world. Uh, if they're not in your corporate system, they will have something access remote screen, share my screen. You see, it's the same type of skill set for almost every other machine. So here it says to access your remote customer uh, screen for troubleshooting customer email address option. So this this is the option uh, right here. And then we have this share my screen option. So you can you can use both. So if I do this start now, if I click on start now right there, you see, guide your customer to join Zuho, join Zuho and enter this session ID. So it's very simple. You can copy paste this link and send it to a person via SMS, or you can tell them on the phone, hey, you know, go ahead and do this part. So I'm just gonna copy this um, and let's go ahead and um, tell Adam what to do now. So Adam is gonna come over here on his machine and he's gonna do the same thing like what he did the quick assist. Here, he's gonna follow the similar guide here. So I'll call Adam here. Let's cancel this one. I'll tell Adam to open your browser. All right, Adam, go ahead and type join.zuho.com um, on your, in your browser. So then I can give you the code to, so you can um, share your screen with me. So I'm going to do join.zuho.com and he's going to type that. Okay, Adam, so here's a session ID. Please go ahead and uh, type this session ID into your uh, um, screen where it says session ID. So 191975. So he's going to say, okay, 191975. And then you can say 793793. And just type your name, Adam. 
And he's going to say, okay, I did that. Uh, can I join? Yeah, so say, yeah, go ahead and join. And he's going to say, okay, this is asking me that uh, JobSkillShare Gmail has invited you to join remote, blah, blah, blah. And do you want to give access? Uh, so you're going to tell Adam, yeah, go ahead and click on agree and download. And that's fine because you're guiding them. They know you're the IT person to help them. The, the, the trust is there. You're on the phone or through the email. And they're going to have to go through this process. So you'll tell Adam, did you get a download where it says ZA underscore connect.exe? He's going to say, yeah, do you want me to run it? Uh, Adam is going to say, uh, yeah, um, uh, the you know technician say, yeah, go ahead and run it, please. So, okay, I'm going to click on open file and run this application. It's installing. Okay, so it says that uh, you're about to join the remote support session. Do you want me to click on join? And you will say, yeah, go ahead and please click on join. And you, uh, okay, it's giving me some sort of pop-up. What do I do now? Um, you can say, yeah, just click on the, the you know, the, the top one where it says domain um, network, such as uh, workplace network. So just click on OK on that. And then you can also click on the private network and just click allow access. It, it is prompting me for username and password. What do I do? So yeah, Adam, just use your username and password. But remember, Adam was a part of our domain. So this is, this is not going to happen to his private machine, right? So here you will type the password for, uh, you know, the, the admin password here and that's not going to happen to Adam because remember this machine is still on our domain we're just assuming things here okay so most of these things may not even happen to Adam because he's, he's already an admin in his uh, home machine so here you will see on your technician side Adam has joined the session waiting for session confirmation you say I'm going to say allow and he's going to confirm it by join and let's go back in here and you see now you can actually see Adam's machine uh, machine because uh, that's is what what his machines look like right so it says right there you're already joined here and on the left side you as a technician have more control so this tool does give you more control like tools for example you can add and remove software from his thing you can run a command prompt go to computer management control panel display settings so this is mostly used for more uh, I would say advanced user who knows what how to do things um, in their you know like troubleshooting um, so there's a lot you can do send a file send chat uh, stuff like that and then Adam can see the things over here so you can actually click on his machine because you already got a control and Adam will see the changes right here so of course uh, what next what I, what we want from you to submit is basically on your MSP help this machine we should see this link where it says right here you're gonna go to the machine right here and you're gonna start the menu right here on the inside the machine so it should say Adam here so that will let us know that you are using Zuho.com you have created your own account and then through your account you got connected to the Adam's machine right here in this um, um, you know right here so you downloaded this everything will happen there and when when you're when you're done with this, that's where you're going to now add a second tool in your resume, which is called Zuho Remote Assist. So you can just type Zuho Remote Assist in your resume. Talk about it. You see, I use an advanced tool. So when I connected to the client machine, I use command tools, computer management, control panel stuff, and that I have done a lot of troubleshooting by using a remote tool as well. So again, take some time, play around with this tool as well. Get yourself comfortable understand that other user is in contact with you try to understand that you're going to do communication with them as well maybe on the phone maybe on the email and that's how remote troubleshooting and most of our remote jobs where it involves you to become a it professionals and who help other people to fix their problems on their laptops this is exactly what they do um, to get into their machines and basically fix their issues and thank you for watching this make sure you submit your ticket to us so for grade you need to make sure that this is open like this. Open your start menu and then Adam should show. So that will let us know that you have taken the screenshot correctly. And your screenshot should say desktop MSP helpless A. And that should show that inside there's a connection going on to the Adam's machine.